guys, welcome to my channel today. And if this is your first time joining me, my name is Melissa and I am an independent coach for Octavia. And what I've got for you today is what you eat on the five in one to lose weight. So I'm gonna take you through my day and show you exactly what the five in one looks like. I'm also gonna give you a tiny little mini coach's corner about fueling hacks for the holidays. It's a little twist. You know, after convention last year, I kind of got away from the fueling hacks after Dr. Anderson, well, I'll tell you about that during the Coach's Corner segment. But right now, I need my first fueling. I need my first fueling. But I also want to talk to you about that. So, okay, I just recently talked to um, someone who is on plan and um, she, like me, is on thyroid medication. I have a low functioning thyroid. It's called hypothyroidism. Um, I have to take medication for that for the rest of my life. Uh, the medication that I'm on is called levothyroxine. It's the same as Synthroid. I think Synthroid is the brand and Levo is the generic, or it could be the other way around. I'm not really sure, but they're basically the same medication. So that medication needs to be taken on an empty stomach and you need to wait an hour before you eat anything. And you need to make sure that you're eating no soy within three to four hours of taking that medicine. The reason for that is absorption. Um, your, for your body to properly absorb it, it needs to be an empty stomach for an hour after you take it and no soy for three to four hours. So that means on our program, we tell people you need to have that first fueling within 30 minutes to an hour of waking up in the morning. This particular person I was talking to told me that her coach said, no, you have to eat within 30 minutes. You have to eat within 30 minutes. And she explained to her about her medication. Luckily, this woman was very informed about her own medication. And so she advocated for herself, but her coach was adamant that she needed to eat within 30 minutes. No, <laughs> no. Doctor's orders, uh, medication protocol has to trump the protocol of the structured eating plan. Waiting an hour to eat versus 30 minutes to eat, first of all, is still within program perimeters. But let's say that her medication said she had to wait an hour and a half. That would take her beyond what the program calls for. And she would wait an hour and a half because it is as important, if not more, that that medication absorbs into her system to help her thyroid function properly. Honestly, if your thyroid's not functioning properly, I don't care what you're eating, you're gonna struggle. So I think that coach was just misinformed and I'm really glad that the client was informed. So lessons learned here, advocate for yourself, learn about your own medications and about your own health conditions because not all coaches, the reason I know about it, uh, it actually is in the literature that we receive, but at the same time, I'm on that medication, so I know about it. But I, I just had, I just felt like this was a public service announcement because I know that, you know, not everybody understands medications and that kind of thing. And I just wanna make sure you guys that if y'all are on thyroid medication, you are waiting an hour to have that first fueling. Okay, now I'm gonna show you what I'm having. And yes, it's been an hour since I had my medication. I start my day with a soy-free fueling because of that medication, so it's always a shake. Uh, I used to do the dark rich chocolate shake, which is soy-free. Sometimes I mix it with peanut, the peanut butter shake, which is soy-free. But this morning, and, then, and really my favorite for a long time, is the caramel macchiato shake. And I love, love to mix it with a caramel coffee. So I just use the Folgers Drizzle Coffee. I brew it right into my cup, I add my shake, and that's what we're gonna go do right now. So here is my Folgers caramel coffee right into the cup. Here's my caramel macchiato shake and my milk frother. You guys, for so long I used to do this in the shaker bottle and it was such a pain. You had to shake real slow and burp it because the heat would build up and cause it to pop and spew. So that was such a pain. And you guys, my wonderful, amazing viewers, kept telling me, Melissa, get a milk frother, get a milk frother. Well, I'd never used a milk frother. So I was like, oh, okay, well, okay, whatever, okay. <laughs> I'm stubborn, y'all. 
Then my daughter one day said, Mom, here's a milk frother. We were out shopping, and she was like, didn't you say you wanted to try one of those? Y'all, life-changing. Watch. Look how easy. OMG. Now, make sure you put it in an oversized mug, not just a regular-sized coffee cup, because it comes up on the sides. And then when you add the, the shake mix in there, of course, it makes it fuller, too. But, y'all, look at that. Not only does it make it frothy, but it mixes it really well. That's all there is to it, y'all. I'm feeling all my Maine vibes today. I wore this shirt in Maine, and I got this cup in Maine. I miss Maine. <laughs> okay, I want to give y'all another little tip. All right. <clears throat> I think the shake with the coffee is perfect, but when I first started playing, it took me a while to adjust to my coffee because I was one of those people that had a little bit of coffee with sugar and cream. So the shake acts as creamer really, really well, and it does lightly sweeten it. Okay, it's not overly sweet though. And when you add it to coffee, then the bitterness of the coffee makes it even less sweet, the shake I mean. So it might not seem sweet enough for you, what you're used to. So add one packet of your favorite artificial sweetener. I use Splenda. That counts as one condiment if I add it. You can also use the sugar-free creamers if you wanted to. Sometimes I do that because it cools the coffee off um, and it also sweetens it and makes it even creamier one tablespoon of most sugar-free creamers is one condiment. They're not on the condiment list, so check with your coach to be sure. Okay, guys, I'm gonna try this. Oh, it's so good, y'all. It's so good. Okay, <clears throat> I got a lot going on today, y'all. You know, I'm getting ready for my um, Christmas garage sale, my holiday garage sale. It's not really Christmas garage sale. It's holiday decor, home decor, all the things. <clears throat> and me and my daughters are doing it together. And our friend Pam, she's going to come over and help. So I had to put my Christmas trees up early. I didn't decorate them, but I did put them up because I knew I was going to sell some of them because I got a new Christmas tree. I got a new, y'all want to see it? So here's what I did. All right. So normally, here, I'll just walk you around and talk to you. The, the, today is going to be a little all over the place, but I think y'all are used to that. Hold on. Okay. So um, I got a new tree for my, don't look back there yet. <laughs> I got a new tree for my living room. Let me show you that. I call it my Charlie Brown tree. That's my Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Um, I've always wanted a tree like this and I haven't finished fluffing it but you see how far apart the branches are? That's what I love, so that you can really showcase your ornaments. And it looks kinda, I don't know, vintage to me. All right, so I've got these wood bead garland that I wanna string on it. And I'll be honest, I, tr I kinda started playing with it yesterday. There's there must be a secret to it because I was struggling pretty big. All right, now let's go over here. Over here, I used to put my little flocked woodland tree, but I'm not doing that this year. Um, I put that in the front. I used to have two of these that I would put in my front windows. Y'all might remember um, from when I would do my try-ons over there at Christmas time. But look at these wood beads. Are they pretty? I got those at Michael's, but I ran out. So I gotta go get more, y'all. Disaster in this house, getting ready for this sale. Oh, there's Abby, she wants to say good morning. Say good morning. Oh, is this gonna talk to us? That means I wanna go out, Mom. There's Moo Moo. Say hi, Moo Moo. And there's Lucy. And there's Boomer. All right, you want to go out? Okay. All right, so like I was saying, I used to put that tree over there. <laughs> Y'all, my house is like Christmas, fall. <laughs> so I used to put that tree over there, one here and one there. But this year, I decided I'm just going to leave my lamp and I'm going to use the flocked tree over here because it's really going to go well with the new look I got going. And here y'all thought that today was just going to be about food. Y'all should know better than that. And yes, we got some Hallmark movies going. Of course we do. Okay, y'all. I'm going to go drink that amazing coffee. And I'll see you back for fueling number two. Okay, guys. Before I go fix my fueling number two of the day, I want to have a small little coach's corner with you guys about fueling hacks. Okay, so last summer... Well, actually the summer before, not this last summer, but the summer before, when I was at convention, Dr. Anderson got asked from the stage, um, what was his favorite fueling hack? 
A lot of y'all have heard me tell this story before, but in case you're new, maybe you didn't, or maybe you forgot. So <laughs> he didn't know what a fueling hack was, you guys. Somebody had to explain to him what it was. And when somebody explained to him what a fueling hack was, he was pretty irate. He said, why are you hacking the fuelings? Don't you understand? It's a formula. It's a scientific macronutrition formula. Why people lose weight as easily as they do and feel so amazing. Don't hack the fuelings. Well, there was a lot of coaches, myself included, in that auditorium that kind of were hanging our head in shame because not only had we hacked our feelings, but we taught our clients to do so. So, here's what he meant by don't hack the fuelings. There are people that take the fuelings and add a lot of ingredients, usually condiments, which are on plan. And I'm not saying that's not okay, but it's not something you should do as a rule. And a lot of people do it too much and they overuse their condiments or overuse their optional snacks. And honestly, the more simple you keep it, the better it is. So don't, as a rule, hack your fuelings. Now, that being said, that means adding ingredients. So like if you wanna waffle something versus cooking it in the microwave, that's fine. If you wanna put your uh, shake in a, an actual blender with ice instead of the shaker bottle with just water, that's okay, because you're not adding anything, you know, macronutrients to it, so it's fine. Then there's also times that you are gonna add things. For instance, we have cereal, dry cereal. There's two different flavors. Most people are not gonna eat their cereal dry. You're gonna wanna put maybe some almond milk or, um, you know, I don't know, cashew milk. There's all kinds of different milks that are on plan as condiments. So that makes sense to use a condiment with a fueling. That, I wouldn't consider that a hack. Another one might be the pancakes. You can use Walden Farms syrup as a condiment. Use that on your pancakes, that's okay. We just don't need to be adding this and that and the other thing to our fuelings and to the point where we've really kind of thrown the macronutrient formula off. Okay, that being said, <laughs> now we're gonna talk about what I think, and this is my personal opinion. This is not um, official Optavia. This is just my personal opinion for myself. I think there is an appropriate time to hack your fuelings. And I think that time is around the holidays. And here's what I mean. Oh, I'm really crooked, I just realized. Hold on, y'all. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe I wasn't. Anyway, okay, so over the holidays, there's lots of different ways to navigate the holidays. And I'm not gonna go into that because I'm not gonna coach over your coach. These coaches' corners, I try to keep really general, you know, just basic information or just my own little tips and tricks. But navigating through the holidays, you need to schedule a phone call. If you're not having a weekly phone call with your coach, which you should be having, but if you're not, you need to schedule one. Reach out because you need to have a plan. Our first big holiday event is next week, Thanksgiving. And let's face it, that day is centered around food. Most of the holidays are holiday events anyway. So you need to have a plan going in, knowing what you're gonna do. I have strategies that I work with on my clients. I've been talking to them about it this week and next week, I'm definitely gonna try to reach out to every client, even those that haven't talked to me in a while. So if you're my client and you haven't been on the phone with me in a while, reach out, okay. So I'm not gonna go into detail about how to navigate the holidays. I want y'all to do that with your coaches one-on-one. -on -one. But I am going to give you this little tip or trick or piece of advice that I think is, is actually a good idea. So let's take Thanksgiving, for instance, okay? All right, so Thanksgiving. So let's say you're going to stay on the five-in-one. You're not going to detour at all. You're going to stick with your plan. You're going to stay on point. You're not going to have any type of like indulgences. Now would be a great time to hack your fuelings. That's what I mean. Sweet potatoes, for instance. The sweet potato fueling is really good and it's good all by itself. But if you really want to fancy it up for Thanksgiving dinner, then here's a way to do it. Get a pen and paper, pause the video and write this down if you like sweet potato casserole because it is delicious what I'm about to tell you. And y'all, to me, it tastes just as good as sweet potato casserole. All right, so I've, I grew up having sweet potato casserole with marshmallows on top. Um, I've also had it with the kind of pecan crumble, you know, the real sweet uh, brown sugar, you know, pecan crumble. I've had it that way too. So I'm going to kind of give you um, a little recipe 
that's gonna incorporate both. All right, so you make your sweet potatoes just like the package says. Then you're gonna take your Walden Farm syrup and you're gonna heat up one tablespoon. That's half of a condiment, one tablespoon. And you're gonna mix that in to your sweet potatoes. Then you're gonna take a half of an optional snack worth of pecans. Weigh it out on your scale, because it's a small fueling. You don't need a whole bunch of pecans, just a few, you know, break them up into pieces, add those to your sweet potatoes. That's half of an optional snack and a half of a condiment so far. Then you're gonna do a tiny dollop of Ready Whip, one tablespoon. Two tablespoons is a whole condiment. One tablespoon is a half a condiment. So do half a, half a table, do one tablespoon of Ready Whip on the top and then you can just kind of swirl it in. Y'all, it tastes just like sweet potato casserole. It's perfect for Thanksgiving. You know, you can add that into your meal. You can split that, you know, so you can kind of split your lean and green and have a fueling with the meal. And then later in the day or earlier in the day is maybe an appetizer, have some of your protein and another fueling. Work with your coach to plan out your day, okay? Work with your coach to plan out your day. Okay, <clears throat> but that's one little fueling hack that works really well at Thanksgiving. All right, here's a couple of other ideas. All right, so, you know, usually there is dessert. So here's what I was gonna say. Those sweet potatoes, when everybody's having their, if you don't, if you just wanna have your regular lean and green, don't add a fueling, you can save those sweet potatoes for dessert time. When everybody's having pumpkin pie, you can have that. You won't feel like you missed out on anything, I promise. And you're gonna feel so empowered and so proud of yourself for sticking to your plan. Okay, here's another thing you can do when everybody's having dessert. You can take the brownie. Now, we've got the new blonde brownie. I think this might work well with it too, but the things that I find I think this works well with is the brownie with the yogurt chips, the cream cheese cinnamon swirl cake, and probably the blonde brownie too. If you like cream cheese frosting, this is a way to make those fuelings feel more like a special dessert when everybody's having theirs, okay? So you can take a condiment's worth of cream cheese, light, low-fat cream cheese, and I believe I'm going from memory here, y'all. I think it's a tablespoon. Check your condiment list to be sure, okay? And then one packet, probably won't even need a whole packet, maybe a half packet of your favorite artificial sweetener. I like Splenda. Now, if you use a whole packet and a tablespoon, that's two condiments, so, at worst, you're gonna maybe go over your condiments a little on Thanksgiving day. As far as splurges go, that ain't too bad, you guys, for Thanksgiving. So now you mix it up, it sweetens that cream cheese, and y'all, it tastes like cream cheese frosting. It really does, it's so good. And then you can spread it on your brownie, you could spread it on the cream cheese swirl cake, or even the uh, blondie, the new blondie. And then you feel like you're having, you know, a special dessert. Love that. The other thing you can do is use an optional snack of PB2 powder. You can mix it up and use it as a frosting like on the brownie or any one of those, all right? So here's what I want you to know. This is, the, this is very important though. These little hacks that I just gave you, they are special. They're for special occasions, okay? They're special. You get my meaning? These are not for everyday use. Do not start putting cream cheese on your brownie every single day. Do not start adding pecans and syrup and Ready Whip to your sweet potatoes every day. That is a surefire way to throw yourself out of fat burn quicker than you can bat an eye. Do not do that. Save it for special occasions and then it will actually feel special, okay? So anyway, that's my coach's corner for today. It's just a really short one. That's why I added it to um, what I eat in a day. But right now, I'm gonna go fix me some oatmeal. I love, y'all, they, they, I've always liked the oatmeal, but they reformulated my favorite oatmeal, the apple. And y'all, if you haven't tried it, you need to try it. The very, I didn't realize they'd reformulated it. And I, I just ordered it, because I always do. And I was eating it and I was like, wow. This, this tastes even better than it normally does. And then I read on the package. So the package used to say add two thirds a cup of water. It was too runny. I didn't like it like that. And it diluted the taste and it just, I, I just didn't like it. So my daughter, she said, mom, just add less water. So I just added a half a cup of water. That's what I've always done. 
Well, now that's what they tell you to do is add a half a cup of water instead of the two thirds. And they've done something also to the uh, recipe. I don't know, but it's a good something. So anyway, I'm gonna go fix my oatmeal. Okay, y'all, I went on and on about the new oatmeal. I don't have any of the new ones anymore. This is the old formula, it's still good. But the new one, one of the things that I love about it is you can actually see the little green apple chunks in it. So next time I do this, I'll, I should have my order because I still order oatmeal, y'all, and I absolutely love it. So I'm going to add half a cup like I always do. See, the new package tells you to add a half a cup. This still says two-thirds of a cup, but the new formula says half a cup. All right. So I'm gonna stir it up. I can smell the apples. See, that's that's something I noticed right away. With the old formula, as soon as I added the water, I could always smell the apples. And the new formula, as soon as I opened the package and poured in, I could smell the apples. And they're green apples. All right, two minutes. Okay, you guys, I had to put it in a different bowl because um, I normally put it in a more, um, open shallow flat bowl so that it doesn't bubble out. And I don't know what I was thinking. And it bubbled out and it made kind of a mess all over the side of the bowl. So here it is. You see the steam coming off. Probably need to let it cool off, but let's just take a little bite. Nothing like hot oatmeal on a very cold day. We're actually having cold weather all week, y'all. I'm so excited, I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. I know a lot of people, they like to hate on the oatmeal. I love the oatmeal. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll meet you back for my third fueling. Okay, guys, I'm getting ready for my garage sale. My daughter and grandson just left to go grab them some lunch and I'm about to have my third fueling. Um, I'm having the creamy double peanut butter bar. Here, I'll open it so you can see it, hang on. Here you go has peanut butter on the back, and then it's kind of a crisp bar. I like it because it's a little salty sweet. It's a little bit salty sweet, I really love it. But I wanna show y'all <laughs> the mayhem that is my life right now. Okay, hold on. So, my daughter, okay, so hang on. my daughter brought this trailer over with her stuff. We unloaded everything out here and into my garage right there on the end because I already had most of my stuff there. My younger daughter hadn't even brought her stuff yet. So what Casey and I are in the process of doing out here is we took everything out and then <laughs> we're setting up this trailer. We're gonna leave this up so people, it just gives us a little bit of extra space for people to shop because I don't think it's gonna all fit in my driveway. But here's just like, yeah, so it's home decor, household goods, and holiday decor. I know this is so interesting, y'all. All this stuff in here is just my daughter's. Look at all those things back there. So, and then she's got some of this furniture. Y'all, those little benches, she used to use those as bar stools. She barely, they're like brand new. Brand new. She took the seat cushions, I mean the seat covers off of that. Those are gonna all be lamps. I don't know, look, y'all, yeah. Okay, now, if you go in here, <laughs> Scott can't even get to his golf cart, y'all. It is a total hot mess in here. Yeah, we have a we have a thing about throw pillows. <clears throat> yeah, I think we're selling four Christmas trees in this cell. All of these crates, the majority of what's in these crates is Christmas items. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a Christmas tree. Yeah, look down there, y'all. Yeah, these are just everyday throw pillows that are going. And then this right here is the section of keep Christmas. And I'm about to have to go put this. Okay guys, so I think we're gonna carry all this stuff into my house so that we have room to set up tables and unload all those crates. So I'm gonna go eat this and drink another bottle of water and I'll catch you back for my fourth feeling. Hopefully by then I'll be in the house and it'll be nice and warm and I'll have, maybe I'll do my caramel macchiato shake again because I love that. It's nice and warm for a cold day. Okay. 
Okay, it's that time, and I told y'all I was gonna have another shake, so I didn't even show you how I did it in here in my little to-go cup. This is what I call my little ceramic to-go cup, because me and my daughter are fixing to head out to go buy some stickers to start pricing everything. Oh, I should take you out in the garage and show you. This is a caramel macchiato shake, by the way. But what we did is we opened up all of our tables, and we put it, we just, Huh? <laughs> My daughter's over there like, don't get me in the background. Yeah, okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave that right there. Okay. See the full effect. <laughs> yeah, so we just stacked it on top because, I mean, we've got like seven or eight tables, but we have so much stuff. So we've got to get more tables so that we can spread it out. There's stuff underneath the tables. Looks like a winter wonderland. Christmas, it looks like Hobby Lobby came to town. Oh, so there's all that and here's some fall stuff and just some regular stuff and some more just regular stuff four Christmas trees <laughs> lots of pillows and then this right here I want to show you all this this is awesome all right this those four crates and that crate is a astronomical train set that was my grandson emptied this organized it and reloaded it. So now all we gotta do is price all this and get some more tables so we can spread it out. <gasps> That's Scott moaning and groaning. Oh, I don't even wanna hear it. We've been working our buns off. Yeah, I know. He looks just like rolled first in. Monday blew up in here. <laughs> he said it looks like first Monday blew up in here. Okay, I gotta go get busy, y'all. He's here. That means She's it's here. lean and green time. Yeah, buddy. And this chick is hungry. I have worked my little patootie off. Hungry and work a patootie. Off. I have. My gosh, I've been I've taking them. I always wanted to know what a patootie was. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I've been showing them all day long all the stuff. Oh, snap. Gosh. Oh, yeah, gosh. I feel like first Monday blew up in our garage. I know, and it really does. It does look kind of like that. Okay, so what are we having for dinner tonight? So, fortunately, last night, anticipating the kind of week I was going to have, I cooked a casserole, the deep dish pizza casserole. So, it I has. Helped. Yes, you did. <laughs> you really did. Uh, ground uh, turkey sausage and uh, turkey pepperoni, low-fat mozzarella cheese. That's the That makes up your protein source. And then it has mushrooms, bell peppers, and tomatoes, yep. which makes up your three vegetables. Three veggies. And so I'll link the recipe, but here it is, y'all. And it really does taste like a deep dish pizza. I think it's the mushrooms and the turkey it sausage. Does, yeah. That's what does it. All right, guys, we're going to go eat, and then we'll see you back for our uh, final fueling, which is going to be pudding for me. And what are you going to have, shake or brownie? A shake. He'll have a shake. He's on a shake kick. I'm on a shake kick. Yeah. All right, guys, we'll see you back for our last fueling. I really can't believe you're going to drink that cold shake. I mean, my pudding's cold, but that's really cold. Because it's so cold in here. It's a hot chocolate shake. I almost thought, I've already had, it's not a hot chocolate <laughs> shake. I almost thought about having another coffee fueling. I've already uh, had two today. But the one was decaf. Just because I'm so cold. It's so cold here, y'all. What's the temperature? Outside? Mm-hmm. Let's see. Drum roll. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Whopping 39 degrees, but feels like 35. It's cold. That's cold. It's a, it's a tad nippy. And I'm about... <laughs> what? Nippy. I'm just <laughs> nippy. Just sounds funny. <laughs> Pudding. Shake. Yeah. Last feeling, and I am super tired. Y'all, ooh, is a thick oh, one. Oh, wow. This is thick. Look how thick it is. I'm oh. telling you. They've done something with the ingredients. He makes my pudding for me every day, y'all. Um, he it's just does. <laughs> he just does. And it's it's thick. I don't know what you do to it, but you make it so thick. It's all in the love. <laughs> I don't know. He said... Oh, oh. that's been where he's having his, his after... He's drinking drink. some water. He's drinking some water. Um, no, but sometimes it's thicker than others. I don't know what it is, but it's good, y'all. I love the fudge, it's fudge the pudding. Whisk. Okay, guys. I'm super tired. 
This has been a really long day. She's having a pudding and a pillow. Yeah, real soon. <laughs> real soon. All right, y'all. I hope y'all had a great day. I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, you know, what you eat on the five and one um, kind of garage sale vlog. That was fun. <laughs> that was fun. All right, y'all. Until we get back together again, you guys just be blessed. Stay safe and stay well. And, and we're, we're out. out. Deuces. Y'all have a great day.